very purpose of this lecture is to going to try to prove that some of the so-called experts who make statements don't know what they're talking about and they have no way of verifying what they are talking about. So we want to go back to basics in swimming pool chemistry and swimming pool operations and do some blackboard work to find out really what is chlorination all about. Chlorination is whenever we add chlorine gas to water, we end up with the end product of hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid the water, we get a half a pound of hydrochloric acid, which is a dis hypochlorous acid, which is a disinfectant, and a half a pound of hydrochloric, which causes a depression in pH. Now, what is pH? pH is compared to a 14-inch ruler, and the halfway point would be seven, which would indicate that we have neutral water. Seven on down to zero, we get progressively acid water. And as we go from seven to 14, we progressively make basic water. There's a correlation between chlorine and pH. They are interdependent. If we take this area right here that we're operating, a pH between 7.0 and 8.0, this is the normal operation for water, swimming pool operation water. So what we're going to do here now is try to prove a point by using this configuration right here of hydrochloric acid, I'm sorry, hypochlorous acid, which is a disinfectant. At a pH of 7.0, we have 100% disinfection, hypochlorous acid. We have 100, we have 0% of hypochlorite ion. If we go to the other extreme of this operating control right here, we end up with at a pH of 8O, we have 100% hypochlorite ion, 0% of hypochlorous acid, the disinfection. Halfway between a pH of 7.4 I'm sorry, 7.5, we get 50% of each. This is supposed to be the ideal point of all. Take a look at this chart, the chart on algae and algae control, and how algae can multiply and cause you a lot of grief and aggravation at any swimming pool if you don't keep it under control. And the only weapon you have to keep algae under control is chlorine. As the chart shows here, algae divide eight times in 24 hours. And if you look at this breakdown on this chart, one division all the way down, the first division in eight, eight divisions will give you 256 algae. At the end of the day, you would have 100,000 gallon pool would have 11,264,000 algae cells. That's for every gallon. It's an awful lot. Now, algae, like all green plants, they multiply and they need the growth through the process of photosynthesis. If you can stop the amount of sunlight getting in there, you can destroy, if you get enough chlorine in there, you can destroy the chlorophyll. By destroying the chlorophyll, you turn that core into a magnesium core and you can destroy it and the algae will fall out. Now it is dead. But you need chlorination there at all times to go ahead and control this. 
of Marx's type of growth. Was this is not meant to be a funny or meant to be a joke. But part of your duties as a lifeguard is to go ahead and help control the growth of the algae so it doesn't get out of hand and it doesn't take over your swimming pool because in a matter as little as 24 hours the algae can take over your swimming pool. So instead of that guard sitting there letting the algae grow up his legs, what he should be doing is taking periodic tests every hour. So if he needs chlorine, make a chlorine adjustment. This picture here is a drawing of our new filter systems that we're using in our swimming pools today. It is a very unique arrangement and the reason why we wanted this type of filter system is because whenever you backwash you need a filter and a pump that can backwash 12 to 15 gallons per minute. In this system we could not afford to bring a pump in with the capabilities of backwashing these filters because there's only two units. So what we do, we use the head of water above the filter to backwash it. We backwash this system without a pump, just using atmospheric pressure and enough head on the outside of the pool to lift the water up. The unique thing about this filter system is this. It's nothing more than a sand and gravel filter with a compound called dolomite. The trademark would be called actolite. This actolite or this dolomite automatically makes a pH correction and also maintains Langlier index automatically. It doesn't cost you a dime. Now the unique features of both are this filter system, it's a vacuum system where at atmospheric pressure pushes down through the, well, the, the swimming pool water goes down through the filter, down through the dolomite and acrylite, down through the sand and gravel, down into the clear well, is being sucked up through the vacuum pump, and then discharged back to the pool as filtered water. Now the unique thing about this again is like I say is the dolomite for making pH corrections in your pool. This next chart give you an idea of what the dolomite is and what it does. The proper terminology of dolomite is called calcine dolomite filter material. What they've done here was to drive off two of the calcium two of the calcium oxides off of each one of these calcium and magnesium magnesium carbonates. You end up with calcium oxide and magnesium oxide. This is the finished product. Now whenever you want to put it in your swimming pool, they slack it by putting water into it. They put water into this and they change the molecular structure of this compound. So what we have up now is a burnt slack nolomite, which can absorb CO2. Because we drove off two of these compounds up here. Now what it does is swimming pool water to make a pH correction. The reason why we make a pH correction is because there's too much carbon dioxide in the water. And this compound thrives and lives on aggressive carbon dioxide. The secret about this thing is that it only takes out the, the amount of carbon dioxide that it needs. It doesn't take it all out. So we end up with a compound with calcium carbonate, magnesium oxide, which is the actolite and we throw in water. Now it removes aggressive CO2. Like I said, it doesn't take it all out. Only the aggressive portion of the CO2. So basically what we need is three volumes of CO2 plus magnesium oxide, calcium carbonate, plus two volumes of water, and we end up with magnesium bicarbonate, calcium bicarbonate. These are insoluble compounds. 
So don't let anybody come back in and tell you that they're going to have a lot of plating out in their filter systems. But the science says dolomite filter material is produced fully. It's water soluble bicarbonates. It makes a pH re response and a pH correction. I must stress one basic thing that you must do when you have a swimming pool with this compound in it. You must backwash. The important thing is to backwash. You want to know where the CO2 comes from. Well, like I said before, if you're having chlorine treating your water, you end up with hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid combines with the bicarbonates in your water and produces chloride, water, and a CO2. Now, the hydrochloric acid also does the same doggone thing. You're adding more, you're adding more hydrochloric acid to the pool. This mixes with the carbonates, and you're making more chlorides, and you're making more bicarbonate. Now we're adding more hypochlorous acid to this pool and combining with the bicarbonates and you're making a, a hypochloride ion now and this in turn joins with the water, a water molecule and makes more CO2. So we have two CO2 just coming out of your reaction with chlorine. So what you're trying to prove here now is the hydrochloric acid is consuming the bicarbonates and carbonates and producing CO2 which will join with the water forming carbolic acid thereby reducing your pH. The formula is almost self-explanatory. This is how you're getting that CO2 into your water by using the ingredients for disinfection.